So today I will be reviewing Love and Hip Hop Atlanta Season 6 Episode 15. So we're heading towards the end of the season and every year in Love and Hip Hop towards the end of the season everything gets crazy. Really, really crazy because the cast is coming towards the end of their contracts so I'm sure Mona's deciding who's gonna get a new contract and who isn't. So you really gotta up your ante, you know, you gotta go in, you gotta be crazy, okay, if you wanna come back. And then you always have real life problems that really creep up. So it's just a whole bunch of pile of a mess. And you don't know which part, which ones are real storylines and which ones are fake storylines. I mean, it's just hard to tell sometimes, child. So let's talk about both of them. So the episode starts with Stevie J and his kids. Now remember, Jocelyn was supposed to be apologizing to his children for acting a fool, supposedly for last season, but I'd say acting a fool ever since season two, you know, in half of season one. She was supposed to apologize, but instead of apologizing, she ended up threatening Stevie's daughter like you can't beat me up and talking shit to her as if she was some stranger on the street. And so to my surprise, Stevie went after his kid, which he is supposed to do. Like, you're supposed to ride with your child every time. Like, something is really, really wrong with Jocelyn's ass. Like, and this and I don't know if she's amping it up for an extension so she can come back next semester, uh, next season, but I, you know, no, I changed my mind. I think Jocelyn really is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> crazy as hell. Crazy, crazy, crazy. And Stevie done got his ass on some shit. Because now he done had a baby with this cuckoo bird. <laughs> Jocelyn is seriously a cuckoo bird. You know, sometimes you think, is this person putting on for the show? You know, somebody just amps it up or something really wrong with her ass. No. Something really wrong with Jocelyn's ass. And according to Stevie, he's not talking to her now because of her behavior towards his damn kids. Okay? Like, oh, play that. Like, you can get in a fight with anybody else on the show, but not my damn kids. And I hope he's telling the truth, you know, because somehow, when it comes to Jocelyn, she always seems to worm her little greasy ass back into his life. You know, always, you know always around and does the most horrible things to him and he never gets mad he just always comes back for more now I understand you got a kid by her so your mess is even worse so you know this is they're definitely getting renewed because this is a, a real life disaster uh, just a damn disaster so uh, great for television I'm just glad I'm not Stevie J let's move on next we have my girl Algie that's Tommy. I call Tommy Algie because she grew on me like Algie. I really could not stand Tommy when she came on uh, last year. But now I really, really like her because Tommy's got some serious. Now, this ain't for the damn show. Some serious, okay, problems going on. She's got a drinking problem that she admits to, even though she, you know, Opening a wine line. <laughs> she, she opening a wine line. Don't get high off your own supply, Tommy, please. You know the saying. She's got family problems at home with her mother. Her mother had a drug problem. And, um, you know, whenever your parents are hooked on drugs, it's just the way it is. Your life is going to be tumultuous. Even though it's, and then you're expected to straighten your life out and live a productive life even though you were handed a basket full of bullshit when you're younger you still have to sort it out so that's what she's in the process of doing and for her right now it's best to keep her mother at arm's length but you know we got a, a, a couple other people on the show i call it the deb crew miss deb's crew you got tammy you got miss deb Miss Deb is all about being an adult now. You know, she suffered some great tragedies in her life. One on the show was the suicide of her son. And so she's all about being a grown woman at this point. So if she can help, she's going to help. So she sat down. The women had an intervention. It was Miss Deb. It was uh, 
Scrappy's mom, I can't think of her name right now, Mama D, and it was Tammy's mom, and they all sat down with Tommy's mom to try to bring some resolution between this daughter and mother relationship because it is broken. And while I applaud the ladies, this might be a bit much for Tommy because she has tried to intervene with her mother over and over again. And sometimes it's hard for people that are, they got their mature hat on to understand. Sometimes it's best to leave it alone. Tommy is a woman now with her own kids. And you know, if they haven't straightened that out by now, I just don't see. Now I'm not a shit star, I'm, I'm a realist. I mean, I like to think I am. I don't see how everyone can fix this relationship. Even if they try, it might be fixed temporarily on camera until the mom goes back into her old habits. You know, she it, it takes a little a while to build up a relationship where your daughter don't trust you <laughs> or talk to your ass or even like you. This takes effort. Repeated offenses. And it just seems like Tommy's mom had built has built it up to that. And so this is not nothing that could be resolved on this show. She's got that issue, which is a real life issue. You know, scrap is still in jail. Real life issue. Then she's got Dine's ass. This is an artificial issue. Let's talk about that. Now, things have been looking up for Dine. I mean, she's got the new cute guy that she's engaged to, right? He gave her a nice ass ring. He didn't get mad when she crashed the Rolls Royce. Things is, she's out that damn pink wig. <laughs> can't stand the pink wig. Things are looking up for Dime, okay? Which is good. But Dime's thinking, mm, mm that's too much good. This is love and hip hop. I got to ratchet up, okay? Or I ain't coming back next season. You know, cause Tommy got real shit going on. I already made up with damn Tammy and uh, Carly Red. Uh-uh. Cause she, you know, she got caught up in the moment. She was just, life was going good. She was like, uh-uh. I got to bring some heat. I got to come back next season. So who's my victim? Algae, AKA Tommy. So somehow she gets Tammy and Rashida to plan a dinner with, with Tommy. So supposedly they can reconcile. Okay, so Don gets to the part, uh, Don gets there, uh, Tommy gets there, everything's going good. You know, everything, you know, everyone's saying how they feel. And then really out of nowhere, Okay, Tommy's saying, you know, I didn't, you know, sometimes, you know, I've had, a, I'm going through a lot with my mom, you know, I had a rough childhood, and sometimes I just take it out on people, and I think that's what happened to you, and before the girl can say, and I'm sorry, dive jumped into, I must get renewed mode, <laughs> like, I gotta get remote, renewed. So she just stands up out of nowhere. Now she was not acting like this in the last five episodes when she was all in love and, and then apologizing to Jocelyn. You can apologize to Jocelyn. You don't ask and apologize to Tammy, except when it's time to get renewed and you want to come back. So she came back like, you don't talk to me anymore. And really just made an argument out of nothing. Now, ordinarily I'd be like, something wrong with Diamond ass. But you know, I know where she going with it. She need to get renewed, okay? Like, she like, Tommy can't be the only one getting renewed. I got to come back. So, for that reason, I ain't mad at her. And then we have the artificial storyline of the Kurt Rashida cheating storyline. So, supposedly, Kurt cheated on her with this stripper named Jasmine, and now she's pregnant. Now, I tried, okay? I tried over and over again. To believe this storyline. So the first time I saw him, made up storyline, but these people do anything to come back. I tried to believe it. I was like, well, maybe he really did. But the only thing that's stopping me from believing it is that everything I'm predicting is coming true. To come true is coming true. Like I said, they're gonna wait to the last. I said this. 
It's on tape. That's why ain't nobody gonna call me like, check the tape. I said, check the tape. I said, he going they gonna drag this out to the very last episode where they're gonna mysteriously find out. And the baby's not yours. I'm telling that is not Kurt's baby. You know, they ought to be ashamed of themselves. Cause you know, in real life where she was friend with friends with like a Candy Burris and a Tiny, you know, they all got their own successful reality shows. And I guess uh, Rashida's like, I don't want to be left out. <laughs> so I'm going to stay. I'm going to do what I got to do to stay on this damn show. So I really do believe that they created a fake storyline. And I'm so certain about it. I'm going to go ahead and make the announcement before the final episode is that is not his baby. Like, Kirk, please. Stop it. Stop it. Child, please stop it. I mean, maybe y'all can make enough money off of press, whatever the name of story. Can we stop inventing these storylines? Please. Child. So that's pretty much what happened this episode. You know, um, next week will be the season finale. When we come back, hopefully they'll show crazy, not Fake crazy, not fake for the storyline, real crazy Jocelyn, hopefully apologizing to Stevie's damn kid and him giving her that damn ring back because the last person he need to marry is her crazy ass. You know, I'm just starting to feel a little sad for Belly Bon, uh, Bonnie Bella because, you know, what if she go on another schizophrenic, you know, psychotic leave, you know, just leave her common sense somewhere, you know, just crazy. But... Hopefully she's on that next week, but I guarantee you the season finale will live up to its name because it's not called Love and Hip Hop Atlanta for no reason. They're known for their ratchetness. So see you then. Bye.